Also, today is International Overdose Awareness Day, putting a spotlight on an epidemic that is simply getting worse and worse. So the number of overdose deaths in the U.S. spiking dramatically in the past three years. Joining us now is Dr. Rahul Gupta, director of the National Drug Pol Control Policy. He's there at the White House, and we thank you for your time. What are you doing today to try to stem this problem? I know you have some new announcements that include some funding. Do you think any of that funding will actually go to making a difference? Well, thank you for having me, Dana. What we're doing today is bringing about 30 families who have lost a loved one uh, from Connecticut to California and Texas to Wisconsin to share their grief uh, of loss and uh, recommit ourselves to action. Uh, we're going to be announcing about $450 million to, uh, to take that action. That includes helping people get more life-saving drugs like naloxone, expand treatment, get people the help. It's a very important part of President Biden's unity agenda for the nation when everyone, uh, no matter who you are, is impacted by this crisis. This is something we can all find common grounds, come together, and beat the opioid crisis. Fentanyl is the main issue that's is causing a lot of these deaths. We've talked about one pill can kill. This came up at the Republican debate last week with Chris Christie saying this about the Chinese. China is sending these chemicals to these drug cartels for them to create the fentanyl that is killing hundreds of thousands of our citizens. The Chinese are engaging in an act of war against us, killing our citizens. Is there anything in today's actions that would deal with the root cause of the Chinese sending the precursor chemicals to Mexico? Well, exactly. This is the administration that has been laser focused from day one on addressing the China challenge, which is all these precursors we are now putting on sanctions and on notice. More Chinese chemical companies and Chinese individuals than ever before. We're making sure we're working with other countries to form a global coalition. More than 80 countries have signed up that are saying this is a problem. We need to be working together to address this threat. At the same time, we're going after the traffickers, both producers and those who are trafficking and playing on vulnerable Americans. Secretary Gina Raimondo of the Commerce Department went to China this week and she had several photo ops with her Chinese counterparts. Do you know if she brought this up? Well, we're looking, uh, we'll be looking forward to her readout, but at the same time, I will say our ambassador, Secretary Blinken, and literally every uh, senior member of the cabinet that visits brings up fentanyl. And this is on the behest of President Biden, who has been serious since day one that we must stop but the precursor shipments, the production of it into fentanyl, and the trafficking of it into communities. And it that still comes, so unfortunately. That, unfortunately, it's still happening. So, Trank is also an issue. This is a drug that people are taking. It's horrible. I see it in New York streets. People that whose flesh is being basically rotted away. Listen to somebody here in Austin. This is Austin, Texas officials on the Trank overdoses there because Trank is not reversed by Narcan, for example. That's exactly right. And in fact, there is not any available agent to reverse the effects of xylosine. We know in general that drugs in our community are still mixed with fentanyl and that they could be potentially mixed with xylosine. And we need to warn people now to save lives. Is there any hope of being able to find something that would reverse the effects of xylosine? Yes, there is, and we're working on that. The important message is still people use, need to use naloxone or Narcan because that does reverse the fentanyl part of the Trank fentanyl mixture. But I declared Xalazine or Trank as an emerging threat earlier this year just for this purpose so we get ahead of it mm -hmm. rather than chasing drugs as we've been doing for so many decades. Yeah, it's a huge problem. Also wanted to ask you this. Apparently, there is a move by one of the agencies, I, think, I guess it's HHS, Health and Human Services, saying that they want to, or maybe it's DEA, help me remember, this is basically decreasing the health risk and the warnings about smoking marijuana when smoking marijuana, it's like, it's literally everywhere to the point that one of the players at the U.S. Open yesterday said that it smelled like Snoop Dogg's living room. And now the federal government is going to say that it's less harmful? Well, let me tell you what has been happening. The president is the first president to look at the federal drug policies in terms of substances, including marijuana. He issued pardons um, for simple possession because it affects people's employment, housing, other things at a time when yeah, we need but more workforce. Yeah, on the health workforce. front. Yes. 
uh, but also on the health front, he's asked two independent agencies, Health and Human Services and Department of Justice, to look at the current science and figure out where it belongs. We're going to let that independent process okay. play out and Doctor, look for and wait for the results. Doctor, do you think that smoking marijuana is better than vaping? Well, I think, look, especially when we talk about kids, the developing brains up to age 22, 25, you shouldn't be smoking, you should not be doing alcohol or marijuana. Uh, this is we something agree. that harms the developing brain. <laughs> we agree on that, Dr. Gupta. Thank you for being on, and we wish you the best of luck and our best to the families that are gathering at the White House today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Dana. Bye. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.